Hey. <coughs> One corner almost done. Well, almost done. Lots of lots of things still to do, but basically, um, wishbones are just about to, um, mopped up. I'm just tacked at the moment. Not all the joints are uh, all the joints are now here. <coughs> all the webs and bracings are onto the chassis, um, and we have basically got the majority of the layout of the wishbone done. Um, luckily, found some. I had some titanium bolts, M10, even exactly the right length, which was amazing to bolt these up to here. Um, we helicoiled these threads out here. Basically, um, when you put a helicoil into something, or the, 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 the bolt may have enough shear strength, when you're tapping into aluminium, it's kind of not the strongest of materials. Uh, but if you helicoil it out, <coughs> basically the helicoil is a large diameter, so you end up with a, a lot uh, a nicer or a larger footprint, you would say, more surface area for the thread to seal in there. So it's kind of as much as a heli coil is a repair system for a lot of things. You can heli coil uh, to make aluminium a little bit more. Uh, so you've got a bigger thread. So we heli we heli coiled this out on purpose, um, and like I say, I, had to have, I had, happened to have some titanium bolts, which is nice, perfectly fit for the anti tamper washers. And they'll be good. I don't think we, do. we won't even need a lot wire those. <coughs> so that's in. Um, so turning loads of bushes. Obviously the bushes that insert into the tubes. Um, most of the right-handed. This one's left-handed. This tube here is going to be a right-handed piece in, a left-handed piece there. So allow me to adjust that. So basically you'll loosen this bolt off. This isn't really going to be a rod end. This will be fixed. <coughs> so basically there won't be a, a, a ball in the center. It'll just be a fixed item. Just allow it to pivot. Uh, left and right. So once it's loosened off, you can <coughs> adjust this to adjust your caster. Um, obviously, any finite adjustments in the camber you would have to do here or here, but you can just dial in the caster that last little bit <coughs> with a, a left and right-handed turnbuckle, which is nice. Um, there'll be a web here, and basically this this piece here will be covered into a plate that'll come up. If we give you a quick example, if you look at <clears throat> my car here it's got this so basically we'll, we'll reinforce these corners here basically with a with a, a wraparound piece of uh, 1.5 <clears throat> thick steel so we'll sort of fill up this void here to give this a bit more of strength also we've been looking here as much as this tube I want because this is bent in this corner here to miss to miss the wheel um, as much as you really best to put the center of the bend to here with this tube it would have been nicer to have it to go from sort of say here to the back so what I'm going to do obviously weld the tube to there <coughs> then come from here to there and I'll come there with a, a 1.2 thick uh, steel um, and then do the same thing like I'm doing today I'll do with that but I'll just do that straight and wrap it around so it gives this this bit here is less of a bending moment we're straightening it out as much as we can <coughs> so I've got a a web to build here, a web to build there. Uh, we'll build uh, a piece here, obviously, because the shock absorber needs to mount from it. Now, <coughs> the shock absorber is going to obviously sit up through here and come down. So the shock's going to sit relatively further to the back than it is to the front. Um, because it's a shock mount, it's taking lots. Instead of just using 1.2, we'll basically use a three millimeter plate for the top and then down and then use the bottom piece as more of a, a, a thinner 1.5. But for the top, that's gonna take and spread the load out. Um, it'll be bent, so it'll have a little bit of structure that way and this way, but effectively um, we'll have to use three mil because we wanna make sure that doesn't bend with the shocks. <coughs> and then I'll have to build a shock tower here. But I'm not gonna build a shock tower until I know exactly the lengths of the shocks. Um, and that's all depend on which shock we use. Uh, so the shock tower is going to be put in last. I shall make sure I have the shocks first so I know the um, limitations we have for the uh, um, <coughs> fully open and fully closed length of the shocks. If I use nitron like I did on mine, I can pretty much dial it into whatever length I want. Uh, with some of the more high-end shocks, that goes from being like eight hundred dollars a corner to like two to three to four to five thousand dollars a corner to do the same thing. So, I do like Nitron because they are uh, just 
like the idea of them and they are really, really good quality. Um, but it always depends what the customer wants. Uh, <coughs> but anyway, yes, first corner on. Um, second corner ready. It's got to start turning a load more bushes to the side again, so I shall do that tomorrow and start mocking, mocking up the other side. Obviously to build the bottom wishbone, we mounted this single piece here in uh, the exact right place and then mounted the uh, tubes of the wishbone so they tallied up with this. Well, with the top, we did the same. We basically bolted, <coughs> bolted a piece of wood to the deck, bolted a vertical to that, and then bolted through. Basically, you can see here, it was a threaded screw through into the wood and we had bottom ball joint obviously installed and then we set it up so it had the correct amount of caster and the correct amount of um, about a half a degree uh, camber because uh, we haven't got extremely wide front tyres so I don't really want to go too much static camber on the front. Uh, once we dialed that in then basically we did the same with this so I had this joint here with that rod end that was fixed in space because all this was fixed in space because it's still bolted solidly now and then we've built around here you can tell this is actually still this is not completely set up yet we haven't got the bottom plate in so realistically you know that's not fixed yet it's not even well put into there but um you need to fix this in space and then you build the wishbone stuff around it <coughs> it's just an easier way to do it plus you can guarantee that the wheel it's exactly where it is, so there's any minor imperfections there might be in the chassis points, it doesn't matter because your wheel's gonna be exactly where it is, um, which is the important thing. <coughs> so yes, there we go. Another another half day, there's another story. Okay, speak to you soon.